Hola and welcome to the Empower with Faith Summit. I'm your host, Mahore Yana. In this summit, we will discover how to take the leap to a life on fire, live your purpose, and see how amazing your journey can be. I'm here with Delina Fajardo, America's Purpose Coach. She's the number one best-selling Amazon author, and she will be sharing her light, love, and truth with us today. How to find, live, and share your life purpose. Isn't that amazing? Well, the reason I asked Delina to join us is because as a natural born leader who is strongly connected to her faith and the divine, Delina's path guided her to discover who she really is and what she was created for and what direction to take. Her primary focus is to inspire and motivate people towards living a more meaningful life, one infused with purpose, self-care, and fulfillment. Welcome, Delina. So happy to have you here sharing your story and message with us. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Milo. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you and uh, your audience. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to share, you know, God's wisdom and grace uh, with you all today. Nice. Well, um, let's start um, by you telling us a little bit more about what you do, what brought you where you are right now. Okay, great, yeah. So I am a life coach, um, but reality, you know, in truth, what I really am, you know, that's like my title, but what I really am is a, a spiritual being. I think we are all spiritual beings having a, a human experience here. Um, you know, part of my journey and life and my experience is to uplift and, and inspire others, you know, to encourage and to elevate people, to enrich lives. So, you know, I found that journey when I really found that I needed to live my life purpose. And I didn't even know what living my life purpose was about. I didn't understand. In fact, when I was asked that question, it triggered me, and I was very uncomfortable because I didn't know how to answer that when, you know, the question was, what's your life purpose? I didn't know where to find that or what that was, and I didn't know if anybody knew what that was. And so I was upset and uncomfortable because I didn't have the answers. So, uh, so I dug deep within myself, and in that depth and going within, I, uh, I revealed and uncovered a lot of things that I didn't want to see and know about myself. But through that, there was the light at the end of the tunnel that I was seeking, so all the answers came from going within. And uh, ever since then, I've really been living authentically, very happy and fulfilled. So my journey went, you know, from feeling very stuck and frustrated and not understanding who I really am or what I wanted in life, thinking I had everything. I had success in many ways, but thinking that I had everything I thought I wanted and it all looked good on paper you know, checklist it all off. And at the end, I was still lacking happiness and my heart was closed and I was overweight and I was frustrated, and I was stuck, and I was angry, and I was disappointed in myself, and I, you know, I just, I went, I was very, I self-sabotaged myself in so many ways, and, you know, that rock bottom was so painful, so I needed so much pain to to move me in the direction that would bring me, you know, lasting happiness, and I could share, you know, with you about that, about how to find your purpose and live your purpose, but that was pretty much my journey and how I got into life coaching, but prior to life coaching, I was in the medical industry. I was a physician assistant by trade, and I was uh, I was in clinical medicine for about 15 years, doing uh, uh, all types of specialty in medicine. So I started out in, oh, doing open heart surgery as a first assistant surgeon, and then I moved into emergency medicine, and then family practice, and uh, plastic surgery, all different types of specialties because I was trying to find happiness in each of them. You know, I every two to three years, I'd get bored or I'd run to sales, and I'd it was almost like the, what was the next shiny thing, you know, that you know that shiny object syndrome that we all tend to fall into, you know, what's the next fix or, you know, what, what could I buy now that's going to fulfill me and make me happy? And I was using my career specialties as shiny objects, so I just kept switching specialties. And i got to tell you, that you, you won't believe this, but I had switched, so within 10 years, I had switched my specialty in a career. So we're talking about open heart, emergency medicine, family practice, all of these different specialties seven times. And people don't wow. change careers. Yeah. So that just goes to the depth of, you know, how uh, the depth of pain I was in and how motivated I was to seek 
lasting fulfillment and happiness. You know, I didn't want to be stuck. And I know nobody really wants to be stuck. We've all been there. But we don't want to be there. We just don't know how to get out. So I was seeking ways based on my own intelligence you know, uh, ways to get out of that. And I thought I was doing all the right things, but at some point you run out of, of it's like how many how many things can you buy? You know, how many specialties can I go into? I ran out of options. And at that point I had to ask a different question. And so that's what I want to share with your, your audience today because my journey was about finding my life purpose. And I had to ask the, the deeper question, which was, you know, what are you really, really happy? Uh, you know, what's going to make you really, really happy? Or what do you really, really want? And when I asked myself that question, uh, when all, all that came up was pure happiness and fulfillment. You know, and, and that was so simple because it's obvious. Like, if we think, okay, it's so obvious, except I wasn't living that way. So even though it was the obvious answer for most of us, I wasn't showing up that way, you know, and are you showing up that way? Right? We all want to, we want that, but how are we creating a lifestyle around us to support that? So that's where I was like, oh, man, I looked at my life and I realized I had been striving and overachieving and, and wanting more and being more and having more. And to me, being successful was, you know, about money and, and, and recognition and, and, and significance. It was about being the best in my career. It was about being the best in everything that I did. And at that point, I realized that that was not going to bring me happiness. That was my ego telling me that that would bring me happiness. But it wasn't my spirit. So that's why I really got connected to my spirit and, and connected into, you know, the surrendering to God and, and allowing him to guide me. And that's where I found my life purpose. So it's an amazing journey, but now my... My purpose is here to serve every body to help them find and, and live and share their life purpose, and it's been an amazing experience. Since. Good. I like that. <clears throat> you know what? Like, well, you were talking about that you had, like, you know, you were speaking for so much on, like, the medical the medical industry. So it can, like uh, – we're all, we're all different, so when we're stuck or when we're, like, not fulfilled, it can come up, as, like, differently for each one of us. So, one, it could be that you have that much energy and you keep, like, moving from one place to another and you keep, like, trying to find so much, like, different stuff that would, like, fill you up. That happened to me, too, that I, I was doing so many things and keeping myself busy because I was, like, I want, I want to feel fulfilled. I want to feel, like, you know, like, full. Oh, and then there's mm-hmm. other people that just get depressed or get down or they just like, okay, I feel, I feel, I don't feel full, but they don't get out to seek more. So both mm-hmm. streams are not good, right? So what do you right. a little bit about that? Mm-hmm. Sure. So the best place to be is in massive pain, to be honest. If you're in neutral, like things are okay, you're comfortable, you know, you're getting your needs met financially. Uh, things are okay. They're not ideal, but things are okay. That's actually not a safe place. And also when things are great, that change is not going to happen there either. It's when change only happens for the most part is when you're in natural pain. And so, you know, everyone will do anything to avoid pain of some, some form. So... So if you are feeling like you're stuck, but that that stuck, you got comfortable in that, then you won't make change happen. So there's so many levels of stuff, right? There's so yeah. you could have right. So we can feel we can feel a little muddy, you know, but we're okay. We can still survive. We actually adapt. We're we're so specialized as humans. We can adapt to anything. So, like, if you make less money, you know, you can, if you get a pay cut, you can adapt. You, we're, we're, we can easily adapt to anything, but it's when it's so massive, like, you lost your job and you have no way to pay your bills. Now change becomes a muscle. Do whatever it takes. You know, you will go out there and you will survive. You will do whatever it takes to survive. That hunger is needed for success. So what happened to me, too, is that when I got comfortable, when I had a work, when I had a paying job, when I, you know, created an environment for myself that was comfortable, I got a little lazy. 
and and even though I was unhappy, I was already too comfortable. So I was already making an income, and I was thinking, well, what am I going to do? I have bills to pay. I have a mortgage. I have all these things. You know, I, I can't leave now to find my passion. You know, what if I can't support my lifestyle? So comfortable is is something that we want to um, we want to be mindful that being comfortable is actually very dangerous if you're unhappy. If you're unhappy and you're comfortable, that's a very dangerous place to be because you can stay there a long time. And then what that looks like and how that shows up is that you don't feel alive in life anymore. There's no passion. That's why people say, I don't feel any passion. They're just going through the motions. We hear these things. Um, you know, you're going through the motions. You just wake up. It's your routine. You wake up. You go to work. You go home. You do this, right? You're living the day-to-day routine. You're going through the motions. Well, you're not really feeling passionate or happy in life. So that's a really dangerous place to be. You rather you would rather be in that position, so that way you can make change in life. Oh, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it totally, it totally makes sense. Because um, yeah, the truth is that we only want to start doing something when we're like in a lot of pain you know like it's like when you try you want to seek help you want to seek like god in your life you you go to your family and ask for help uh is where you act the change starts to happen so i have um you know you can there's a lot of books that um that that say that right when when your main source of income or your main source of happiness or comfort goes away it's where the chain starts and and you actually can break through you have an opportunity to break through and mm-hmm. uh, start living your life start living a life with purpose start going and seeking your passion because sometimes we're too comfortable to make that decision of quitting our job or of uh, moving to another place or like living like uh, stop like stop dating at, or like an unhealthy relationship or whatever so we don't make that decision but then suddenly it can like god can make it happen you know mm-hmm. like you get fired mm-hmm. um or something happens and then yeah. you have to go out of your comfort zone because it's not there anymore so it's like a blessing in disguise mm-hmm. and yeah. uh but we need to be brave enough to make a decision too to actually that's such a good point take a leap of faith, right? You want to talk a little bit about yes. faith and about I, making decisions? Mm-hmm. Amen, amen, yes. Yeah. So here's my belief. I've learned this, and I've learned it the hard way, and so I want to share this insight because it's so important. So here, when we're comfortable, we don't want to step outside the comfort zone. And God needs us to grow because if we're not growing, we're dying. Okay, so if we're not living, we're dying. We're dying inside slowly. It's a slow death and it's painful. What I want to share is that everything in your life has a purpose for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. So we can't expect that what is, what's evolving, the people in your life, the experiences, the jobs, whatever it is in your life, that that's going to be a lifetime experience for you. And people have an expectation that it's going to be. But if you're a faithful person, you know that God wants you to live your fullest life to your fullest potential. Therefore, some things must die. Some things must die off. You must kill some things off. And I don't mean that in a bad way. What I mean is you have to cut those cords to what you're attached to. And you have to stay detached. If you do not detach from the time that you need to detach, when you feel that urge, and that push that you must leave, and you know intuitively that you must leave, and you must move forward, and you must make change happen, and you do not, God will give you what I call, you know, this kind of lapse time. There's a lag time there. And he's going to give you this opportunity for you to step into it on your own and make the decision for yourself to empower yourself so you can build that confidence on your own. If you don't do it, then it is my belief, and this is, again, happened to me multiple times, he will cut the cord for you. So the blessing in disguise, as you talk about, is when you got fired. Because that was, at that point, God pushing you out the door. He gave you the opportunity, and you can think back, and you know for the past year, you know, that you weren't happy, and you you, you wanted to leave, and you send that message out to him, 
and he gives you this opportunity, and if you don't take it, and if, and if it's your time to grow and you don't take it on your own, he'll push you out. So instead of us going into sorrow and thinking that this is, you know, uh, that you're a victim of something, what you need to do is look at this and say, thank you. I don't know how, but I know you have a way, and I know that this needs to be done. And you need to be in grace with that and go with the flow. Just stay attached, go with the flow, listen, and have faith, like you said. You, you need to have faith and you need to believe that this was a gift and that something better is on the other side of that. And always it is, always. So, yeah, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because that's a huge piece in this. Everything serves a purpose in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And let's not stay attached to these things. So my purpose in my life in the medical profession ended, and I was so comfortable in it, and it, it, it gave me certainty, it gave me significance, it gave me comfort, it gave me a, a, you know, a, a, a very nice six-figure uh, income, and it gave me security. It gave me everything that I was seeking at that time in my life and that I needed, and God said, yes, we're going to give this to you. But then he said, it's time for you to grow, my dear. And it's time for you to step outside your comfort zone. And he pushed me out of the medical field, literally. And when he did, I was scared. And he said, no, 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 you're going to reach the masses now. And you're going to live passionately doing what your purpose is now. And that's it. So, you know, it's coaching and it's helping people, you know, step into who they really are, and building their confidence you know, and courage and, and inspiring them to do this for themselves. So, yeah, good piece. That's uh, very, very important for people when they're on this journey. Yes, it is. And when we, you know, we don't make the decisions, we don't take that leap of faith. If we take, like, longer to decide, yeah. we will suffer. It's not that we will suffer, like, a lot, but it's just going to be more painful. Because we are going to keep on that, like, unsatisfied mode all the time. Plus, mm. then when when actually God cuts the cord, it's going to hurt, right? Yeah. But it's so hard to let go. It's so hard to make a change. It's so hard to take a leap of faith. It's not easy, guys. Like, fear, that's that's normal. We all are scared. We all are scared to, to step out of our comfort zone. We all are scared to to explore the new things or, or we have a lot of questions, you know, like what if this, what if I'm like, I won't be able to support myself financially or my family. What if I'm like, I'm going to be a complete failure. What if this, what if that? We all think that. What if I'm not good enough? So you have to walk with fear too and have faith and have mm -hmm. faith that something beautiful is going to come after that because it will right yeah um, so you're absolutely right delina can you talk a little bit more about um what challenges changes of lifestyle habits or you know or um what i know like when we start like change when we decide to change or when things shift in our life a lot of people that we love sometimes are telling us, no, you should go back, or no, you were on the right track, or this is not for you, what are you going to do, like, how are you going to, how, how are you going to make a living from it, this and that, so can you talk a little bit of your experience with all that? Yes, absolutely, because I had to experience those challenges and obstacles uh, along with everybody else on the same journey, you know, we all have these parallel journeys, you know, it's like when we're ready to take the next step, you're just getting on the path of the next journey. And so I've had the same journey and the struggles that you all have had. And so some of the challenges and obstacles that I needed to overcome to get to where I am at now currently is I needed to let go of my ego. And I'm not saying that it doesn't creep up sometimes, but I needed to understand that my ego was leading me down a path that was saying I needed to do more that I needed to be more, that I needed to have more. And that was creating, I felt like I was, I described this in my book, uh, Eight Steps to Find Your True Purpose in Life. I described this as I felt like I was a hamster in a wheel going in circles. And I kept going faster and faster, except I couldn't catch up with myself. And so I was so overwhelmed by this, have more, do more, be more. 
And so I realized that I, that was all my ego saying for, for me to rely on it, that I needed that. And so letting go of my ego really just allowed me to just be, to just be who I was, and that that was enough. So that was a big piece of just saying, no, I don't need to have more. I don't need to be more. What I need to do is just to be who I am and to have confidence of who I am, that I am worthy right now with everything that I have, that everything I need is within me now. If you guys just said everything I need is within me now and walked around with that faith and that belief, you can do so much more. So letting go of the ego that says you're not enough. You know, um, you know. another thing is these beliefs. You talked about all these fears. You know, I had fears of rejection. I had a fear of revealing myself. I had fear of public speaking. I couldn't even do what I'm doing here right now today. I had a fear of just stepping into the unknown. I always felt like I was going to choke up or something, or I wasn't going to know what to say. You know, so I had to let go of these fears and just trust that, that I was guided and to trust that, you know what, so I'm here to serve people, and so people are going to get what they need from me, from my voice, that I'm here to uplift and inspire. I also needed to let go of, and this is a big piece of my certainty, uh, and because the certainty was keeping in, keep me in my comfort zone. So I needed to start to trust and, you know, instead of taking one foot outside the comfort zone and kind of testing the water, I needed to just put both feet out and, and just stand there for a while and experience it and then realize, hey, I'm okay out here. I don't need to have one foot in and one foot out. I'm okay. I'm, you know, I'm, not only am I okay, I'm actually feeling pretty good about myself. And things are, are work, more opportunity is coming my way. So I encourage you guys to do that. You know, uh, scarcity is a huge thing. I, I had a scarcity mindset. Again, we talk about layers. I, I thought I, I thought I was, had overcome that, uh, but I had layers of scarcity. And again, scarcity could also be connected to certainty, wanting to feel comfortable. So then you won't give away money. You won't give what you have because you need to have the bare minimum, what you feel makes you comfortable. And that really rocked me. It was so ingrained condition. I didn't come from money. I struggled. You know, we had poor family income. So I was the first in my family to go to college. So and I paid for all of my college education. I did it all on my own. I worked so hard on my own that everything I had I was holding on to so tight because it was like survival mode. You know? And I realized once I let that go, it was like I was releasing the chokehold on my own my own myself. So I gave myself so much more freedom in that. And uh, you know, another huge huge thing is self love self-acceptance, those were pieces I also needed to work on and work through uh, to really feel that I am good enough because the two primal fears we all have is that we're not good enough and then if we're not good enough, then we won't be loved and we're all seeking the latter. We're all seeking to be loved. So I really need to love and accept myself first so that way I could not accept others or the external environment to provide that for me. And then I can walk around feeling really strong and connected to who I was. So, you know, those are some of the the obstacles and the pieces and and they're they're not small, they're big, but I took small steps towards them every day and I'm still taking it's still a journey. You know, I'm still growing. Yeah, but Small steps, you take small steps every single day, then progress, the progress of that alone will bring so much happiness. So I want you to think about, like, what's the one that you know is holding you back, that's preventing you right now? What's the obstacle and the challenge? Focus on that and really think about, you know, what you need to focus on, how you're going to, you know, overcome that challenge. If you need a coach, you need a mentor, hire one. I'm a life coach, you know, I'm open for clients, you know, get somebody at some type of um, professional or somebody that's been through it. Don't just hire anybody, actually. Hire somebody that's been through it and knows how to get to the other side, that has the results for themselves, that walks their talk. That's one thing I'm really proud of. I walk my talk. So, you know, I encourage you to get in alignment with somebody like that. 
Yeah, I I love that. I love that you're talking about self love. I think like when when we love ourselves, when we start loving and accepting ourselves, we actually can discover. Or probably we can know before that, but just like we accept our why and our purpose too. Because if you don't accept yourself and you don't love yourself, then you're not gonna believe what your heart is calling. You're not gonna believe your that your purpose is is important, right? So. Yeah, I, I, I truly believe that one of the first steps is self love and accept yourself and know that God loves you and and you're like His creation and you have so many people that love you too, but yeah, you have to learn to love yourself for sure and that that's not easy. That's not easy. There's a lot of things that that uh, and situations in our lives that probably are not allowing us to accept ourselves but we need uh we need to break through from that and for um for the last thing that i wanted to talk about um okay so you're an entrepreneur too right and you were yes. coached by pony pony robbins too that's awesome so but i just yes. want you to talk how do you combine business and purpose because there's like some um how do you say like we can think that, oh, no, you cannot make a living from helping others and stuff like that. That's not right. That's, that's some beliefs that people have, but I think you can do it. Can you talk, like, can you talk a little bit about that? Mm, absolutely. So I believe that we're all, first I have this belief that we're all here on purpose and that it is our purpose here to live and share our gifts to just really discover who you really are and what you're here to bring and to share that, okay? So when you can find your life purpose, you can find any vocation or any job that can support that environment. So it's really important to first understand who you really are and what essence you bring naturally. It does not require work. It's how you were born. It's it's something that I can help you get to understand and it's the strongest piece and if you if you live by that authentically live by that every day then you want to find vocations that can energetically support that a lot of times we're choosing jobs based on the wrong you know um, intention and so it causes us to be um, to be unhappy long term So most importantly is understanding you can absolutely live your purpose and be happy and also make money. You just have to have the right alignment. You have to be congruent. And this incongruency that we're all living, the incongruency is that it's there because we're not, we're feeling like we're betraying ourselves. And you may not call it betrayal, but it feels like we're betraying our hearts, and you are. So when we're betraying our hearts, it's when we're feeling like, you know, we're stuck or we're meant for more. We don't know what we're doing. It's, it's yucky. It's very muddy. And it's betrayal because you're not listening to your heart. So we need to focus on what it is we are passionate about and just finding an environment that actually supports that. And it could be in different things. It's not just one purpose. It's your purpose now. That's, so that's why that's my brand. That's the name of my business right? It's called purpose yeah. now because it changes as you evolve, your purpose evolves. So the encouragement is to step into your higher self, into your purpose now so that you can live fulfilled now. You can grow and expand and then as you grow and expand, your purpose will change because you're so much, um, uh, you're, you're a better version of yourself. So as your purpose changes, you step into a new purpose. And it keeps evolving. And that is like evolving fulfillment. And it never dies. You never feel stuck. It's amazing. It's a beautiful process. I hope that answers your question. I, I can go, I could, I could answer it differently if it doesn't, but it, it, you can ask, I'm making a living doing what is meaningful for me and what I know makes me feel alive. That's another measurement that everyone should be using. How do they know if they're living their purpose? Do you wake up every day excited to go to work? Or are you tired and fatigued and exhausted 
when you're, you know, always tired, you know, it's just feeling like there must be something else, that something is missing, that there's something more, but you don't know what that is. And to live numb like that is not to live at all. So knowing means you're feeling alive, you're feeling energetic, you have a smile on your face, you're happy, and there's people out there that are that, right? So living your purpose, that is your measurement. It is when you are sharing your light, you are sharing your gifts. And I can help you find what that is, but you have to make the decision that that's important to you and that's what matters most. If happiness matters most to you in life, if life is about happiness, then you then you want to get in alignment with your purpose and you want to start living your purpose and you want to start sharing your purpose. And it's possible, and it's possible in many vocations. You could just be a parent living your purpose, but you have to understand what that is and how to do it so that you're happy every day and you're excited to be here and you're excited to share and to give and contribute. You talk about self-love. If we're not loving ourselves, living your purpose is self-love. If we're not loving ourselves, we cannot receive love, nor can we give love out. It's a very, it's, a very, it's difficult. Yeah. You know, uh, so, so I encourage people to really to love themselves so that you can share and, and share that love, you know, with others. And, and yeah, it's really just, uh, I want everyone to experience what I'm experiencing, what you're experiencing. You know, for me, this world would be so much of a better place, a vibration that's so high, you know, we could all just, you know, just um, our consciousness together, we can all just live and, 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 and thrive, not survive. And we deserve that. God, God wants that for us. That's why he gave us this opportunity to be here. It's not to survive, it's to thrive. And so we need to let go of this conditioning you know, and step into our greater version. Sorry, that's a long, I know it's a long answer to your question, but I. Yeah. Well, no, but thank you. No, that, that's great. And, and just for everyone to understand, sometimes you don't even need to, like, switch your job or your profession. You just need to re, like, reconnect with your why. Why are you doing it? How can I serve? How can how can I do a greater good with this that I'm doing? Not always you have to quit or start a new profession or a new vocation. Probably you're on the right path, but you just lost your why. And that's yeah. what it's getting you tired, like not motivated and this and that. So wherever you are, you can make a difference. That's real. Yeah. If you're surrounded by people, yeah. if you have people around or you have like any sorts of communication out, internet, uh, physically, relationships with people, whatever, you can make a difference. You can live your purpose wherever you are. That's my thought. Mm -hmm. That's okay, right. But, That's absolutely right. Yeah. Well, Billina, I know you have a gift that you want to share with the audience. Can you share what that is? And they can find it sure. on your website, PurposeNow.com. So, yeah, just tell us all yes. about that. Yes, so PurposeNow.com. In fact, on the website, on the homepage, people can take a free quiz. And that quiz will give you a personalized report on where you are now. So, you know, as far as if you're living your life purpose now or not. So it's a couple of questions, about 25 questions. It shouldn't take you more than 15 minutes. But, you know, it will at least give you uh, some clarity as to, uh, you know, where to start. And then if you want to continue with me, we can certainly, you know, I can certainly coach you and we can kind of take you through the journey so that you can find your life purpose. So that's on my website and there's some other things on my website as well, so that free gift. But the free gift that I want to specifically offer your your listeners is a life purpose statement. And this life purpose statement will help you uh, live your life purpose. It'll help you find it uh, as well. So it's really interesting. It's a couple of questions. And answering those questions at the end, you'll put together what uh, I call a life purpose statement, and it's going to basically give you um, who you really are and why you were here, you know, why you were created. So really identifying your strengths, your unique qualities, your gifts, and, you know, that's, that's who you really are and what you're here to give, and then, you know, why you're here, what's the world you're here to create. 
So it's a really, it's a very uplifting uh, statement, and it really just gives a lot of people clarity. And it's almost, it's exciting. It makes people really enthusiastic to do it. I do that. I work through this with my coaching clients. And this practice is one session that I have with my coaching clients. So I'm really giving you guys something that's worth like, you know, $350 here just to, for free. So I want to encourage you to click on this link and to utilize it to your best interest. And it really is it's so uplifting. Everyone's so enthusiastic after after doing this exercise. And uh, so that's my gift to you guys. I'm really excited. If you're on this call and you've listened through to the end of this, then you're committed and you're dedicated and you feel like this is something that's important to you. And so if it is, then this is the next step. You never want to walk away from a situation not taking the next step. Because, you know, sometimes life gets busy and then tomorrow might be too late. Tomorrow may, it may not even happen. So I encourage you right now, you get off the phone, you have the link, you know, it's sent to you by email. Click on the link and download the form. Put your name and your email, you'll get the form, fill it out. It shouldn't take you very long. And with that, you'll get so much more clarity. I got so much clarity after doing this for myself than, you know, you know 15 years of a college education. So I just encourage everyone to do this for themselves. It's so, so important. So that's my freebie. Great. Thank you so much. That's a very useful freebie. Like, I think this yeah. is amazing. It's a great opportunity for everyone to start, um, uh, start like digging in themselves to see what their purpose is and if they're actually on the right track. So thank you so much. Yeah. You have the link on your email so you can get in and then, uh, Delina's website is PurposeNow.com. You can go in there, too, to take your quiz. And thank you, Delina, for sharing with us your passion journey. We learn how to discover our purpose, how to start living it now, and how can we transform our own lives. So thanks. Oh, you're so welcome. It's my pleasure. This was a lot of fun, and I feel so connected to you and to your listeners, and, and I really feel like this is uh, – this is this is something that we all need to learn about and talk about and and share. And so uh, so it is my pleasure. This is me living my purpose, right? So to talk to you all today. And so I, I appreciate you, and I'm I'm so grateful for you all listening and for being here present with me. Uh, much love and big hugs to you all. Thank you so much, and. Um... Tomorrow on your inbox, you will find the next interview of Empowered Space. So let's um, let's start uh, finding a purpose, living it, and sharing it. Right, Delina? Woohoo! I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Okay, guys. Bye. Adios. Bye. Adios.